The mold of the sheep was provided to me by the owner of the animal and it was made using a plaster cloth um, similar to how casts are made and it was wrapped around the animal. Um, once it's wetted it hardens and it forms to the animal. So the pictures here are me putting that wrap in a bucket. I'm going to eventually backfill it with sand and then fill it with plaster of Paris. The plaster of Paris is great because it cures relatively quickly and is easy to work with. Once you have taken the cast out, we are going to make a template for where the harness is going to be. Um, the important things here is to make sure it's the coverage you want and that there's enough room around the armholes. This is eventually going to be our template to cut the plastic that will be our harness. Alright, so after I made the mold of the sheep, I traced out where I thought the harness would best fit. So once you have it traced out, you can then make a paper template and you can see it's a little bit different than the traced out, but this ended up being the design I wanted to go for. So once you have the paper template, you can then take your ABS sheet and cut the template out. So eventually I'm going to fiberglass this. So before I put it in the oven, um, I'm going to use 60 grit sandpaper to rough it up so that the fiberglass will have an easier time sticking to it. Once it's all roughed up, um, we can bring it into the oven and for about five minutes at 350 degrees, and then it should want to just melt right over this mold and we should be ready to fiberglass. <laughs> Alright, so I have roughed up this piece of ABS pretty coarsely. It's rough to the touch. And then I also made sure to go around all the edges just so that um, epoxy and fiberglass is going to want to stick. So I have a baking sheet and a sheet of um, baker's paper. And I'm just going to set this on this. I have my oven preheated at 350 and I'm going to put it in for five minutes. You see I prepared my cast of the sheep right here because we're going to add foam in between the sheep and the harness. So I added some piece of towel to kind of act like the foam until we actually have it. And that way it won't be too tight of a fit when we actually put this on the animal. All right, so let's put it in the oven. All right, so I have protective gloves on um, just because everything's gonna be nice and hot. I'm gonna double check, this is nice and floppy, and then we should be able to pick it up and mold it into shape. So, set it right on there. Pull it there until it starts to form up. It should start to get stiffer over time. So I'm just pushing it where it needs to go, centering it all up. And now it's formed to the mold. All right, so let's do a quick overview of the parts. So first we have our harness. This I've already assembled. All you're going to need to do is to make the um, ABS inner sheet and then I fiberglass the outside and then using this adapter that I 3D printed, you're going to drill the holes, countersink them and bolt this all together. And then for extra reinforcement, I used the same pipe we're going to use for the rest of the bill and then I epoxied it in these spots right here. And this is gonna reinforce the 3D prints, which is the weakest part of this, so that it doesn't crack or wear down over time. So from this, it's then going to attach to our maker pipe. This is EMT conduit. It's going to attach using these 45 degree connectors from maker pipe. And then inside our middle shaft, we're gonna have our axle and we're going to use these threaded spacers um, that are also 3D printed in order to make a snug fit for this axle. We're going to have our tip stopper wheel which is going to have this pipe as an axle so I 3D printed this wheel just um, so it would be a perfect fit for this. We got some more maker pipe connections, some EMT conduit and then some more connections which is going to um, attach to this main axle and then we also have the squat stoppers which I already have partially assembled um, they have 3D printed nubs at the end of them, and then this 90 degree connection, and then of course we're going to have more maker pipe connections to go to the main um, frame. Because of these connections and because of the EMT conduit, all these sizes might be different for different animals. So for this animal, um, we have 12 inch squat stoppers, 12 inch um, tip stoppers for this main wheel, 
and then we have a 25 inch main axle and then the wheels are going to go on either side of that axle and because of the size of this um, I think it's 5 8 inch axle it's actually just going to slide right over the main wheels and the wheels are actually made for bigger style of wheelbarrow so they should be more commonly available if you need to find them at your maybe local hardware store more likely I ordered mine off Amazon and that worked the best for me with all these we're gonna start assembling um, we're gonna start with the main axle though because everything builds off that alright it's time for the axle so with these 3D printed spacers um, quite easily they should just be threading on it does take a long time to thread this on by hand so we are gonna have to thread them on and then what I do is I space it every about three inches apart this is gonna help um, transfer some of the load onto this because this is solid steel so this is going to be really strong and then the pipe is going to just slide right over this we're going to thread a bunch of these on and get this pipe on and get ready for the wheels and just like that all the spacers are neatly on the rod so let's start putting the axle tubing on all right so this is going to be a tight fit so this tubing should just slide on and it's going to slide over each one of these spacers um, you might need a little force. One thing that is really important is to make sure each end of your pipe is deburred because if there is a little lip on the end of your pipe, it's going to stop it from sliding over nicely. And just like that, our pipe is on. Um, what you're looking for here is I put a spacer at each end so that it lined up real nice. Um, hopefully you can see that. And then you don't want any slops. So you want it to be tight. Um, you don't want it to be sliding off by itself. You want it nice and tight. All right, after you got this pipe on, I threaded a nut on. This is about four inches from the end, which is about how much space you need. So I would keep it four inches from the end on the other end, and then the other end we will eventually cut to the right size. So you will need one nut. Make sure to add Loctite to it. I won't be adding Loctite because I have to disassemble this, but anytime you see me do a nut and a bolt, be sure to use Loctite. You can use temporary Loctite if you plan on repurposing this or adjusting it to the animal in the future. But if it's like a smaller dog who's already fully grown, um, feel free to just use red Loctite. Speaking of dogs. <laughs> so um, you got one bolt and then this will thread right on. And then you're going to use the other bolt to sandwich the wheel. So by sandwiching the wheel, you're going to take all the play out of it. And there should be no play um, in the wheel. You're going to do the same thing to the other side and then we will mark and cut the end. All right, now you should have your completed wheel base. It's a little difficult to get this in shot. And you can see we got this little extra stub sticking off the end. So we need to cut this. But what's great about this design is it uses that steel threaded rod all the way through and this pipe. And it makes it strong enough where you should be able to stand on it. And most animals aren't going to be heavier than me. So um, this is a good foundation for any wheelchair. I would recommend it any animal under 100, 125 pounds should be plenty strong enough for them. Um, luckily our sheep is about 80 pounds so it should be plenty strong enough for that we are ready to start attaching our harness to it so we can start by putting the harness into these 45 degree connectors um, they're pretty loose so that i can move them around and then once it's centered you're going to tighten it all down all right now that we got it attached to the main axle um, i'm going to drill two holes through these connectors that way it doesn't slip on this main pipe because this is where most of the weight's going to be that's why i'm going to do it here you can also do it for the squat stoppers and the stabilizing wheel that comes out of the front um, that just all depends on how heavy your animal is and how much they use those features but just to keep this from not slipping i'm going to drill two holes and put a bolt through it all right so now you can see we got these two bolts and that's going to stop this thing from sliding left and right and forward and backwards so it's firmly attached to this axle rod so now what we're going to do, um, the last part's pretty easy. We just got to attach the stopper on the front and the squat stoppers on the side and we'll be good to go. All right, and the wheelchair is put together. As you can see, we got the squat stoppers installed, one on each end. And then we also have the wheel brace on the front. As you can see, that's it. And the only thing left to do is the padding and the straps. All right, with the straps done, it is completed. So we've got three straps going on. We've got two straps on the side and then one strap going over the back. And the way I've oriented it is so that they all latch onto each other and it's very secure. And then of course I have the cast we did of the sheep to make the initial um, main harness part. And you can see if I orient it properly, nice up in the front. We've got room for each leg 
which is awesome on each side and then the tip stopper right now is holding it up but in reality it's going to hover above the ground some and the sheep is going to be square in this harness thanks for watching my video if you have any questions feel free to comment them below and i will link the 3d files in the description